human beings are spirits and uh, we live in a body. This is something that I've always insisted because people do not understand who we are. We are spirits living in a body. And uh, this body, remember, when God uh, created the dust of the earth, you know, he created the dust of the earth like a human, like what we see, that image of, of him, he created that thing. When he breathed, when he put his spirit on this dust, the dust became a living soul. So that dust, which we call a body, it has a soul. You understand? And this soul, it is what we call the free will because the soul comprises of three things, the emotions, the mind, and the free will. So now, if the free will, if this free will is with the body, the body has a free will, and also the spirit has a free will because remember god god himself god is love god is peace god is war that is free will that is still another i would call it type of a soul but here we call it spirit so god is spirit and we are spirits we came from god we are part of god and then we live in a body which has a soul and that soul is a free will so meaning your body and your spirit, they both have different free wills. Your spirit has its own free will and your body has its own free will. So your body wants to do things its own way and the spirit wants to do things its own way. Are you now understanding the point here? So now, when the Bible says walk in the spirit so that you don't fulfill the desires of the flesh, it means the flesh has its own desires because it has its own choices. It wants to do evil, to do sinful things, right? That is the flesh. The flesh wants to do these things because that is how the flesh is. And that is the body of the sins of the flesh. Now, the flesh serves one thing called sin. Initially, the body was not meant to serve sin. It was meant to serve the spirit. And who is spirit? Spirit is God. So the body was meant to serve God. It was basically some type of avatar that God created because God is a spirit. He wanted a body to use. But then, this body that God created to use, the body said, okay, because I know I have a soul and I'm a living soul, the body is living in his own way. It says, I will not follow God, the spirit. God, you will not control me. I'm going to go on autopilot and do my own things. Take, for example, uh, I'm sure most of you, many of us, we have played or maybe we have seen people playing a computer game. For example, a football match, FIFA and things like that. Using that, uh, you know, that gadget i don't know they call it what it's like a joystick of some sort and when those players are playing maybe you are one of the players who you're controlling yourself with that thing and it reaches a point when you don't control using this thing gadget or this uh, controller the player who is supposed to be you on the screen goes on autopilot and starts playing his own things, losing the match or maybe uh, getting out of the field and things like that. But he still continues playing. Until you take control of him, then can he play right? Can he do what is right? You understand? That is exactly what the flesh is. The moment you stop controlling the flesh, taming the flesh, the flesh goes to in autopilot. And how do you tame the flesh? How do you tell the flesh, hey man, now you have to listen to me because you are created for me. I was not created for you. You see, men are being controlled. The spirits today, people, human beings who are spirits, who are gods, they are now being controlled by the flesh. How does the flesh control you? Because you are not controlling it. So how do you control the flesh as a spirit man? very simple ways god has already given us a formula remember the bible says in the book of isaiah be still and know that i am god 
The first way that you can start controlling your body is by starting to be still. Silence is key. The moment you keep quiet, you sit down and you're quiet for a few moments. The next thing which happens is you start thinking. What is thinking? It is basically meditating. And what does the Bible say? Meditate upon the word of God day and night. The moment you keep quiet, you sit down in in a simple way, you start thinking. Immediately you start thinking, that is meditating. And when you start meditating, you have started getting into the fourth dimension where the spirit is. The moment you have started speaking to yourself from within, then you have gotten into the fourth dimension. The third dimension is the senses, the things which are out in the flesh, the eyes, what we see, what we hear, what we smell, what we touch, what we... Those five senses are in the third dimension. But the moment you become silent and you start thinking, you've gotten now into the fourth dimension. You're getting into the spirit world. And the moment you get into the spirit world, you start speaking to God and God starts answering you. The things that you hear speaking in your mind, it is God who speaks to us in that small, still voice. And he gives us instructions on what we need to do. Do you see the point there? And what happens next? After you have been silent and after you have meditated, you have heard the voice of God, what does he want you to do? He wants you to go out there and make his word law. Follow the law of God. Now, do you see people who make make decisions in their minds after they have thought and meditated upon them, but then they don't fulfill them? Why? Because the flesh tells you, hey, you said you will not gossip. You have just decided from within you that you are not going to gossip. Well, I have some good friends here coming so that we gossip. So the flesh wants to take you in its own ways to go and gossip, to go and steal. You have just said, I am not going to steal anymore. I just want to be a straightforward person. I want to do what is right. Why? Because... The spirit always tells you to do what is right, but the flesh wants you to do what is wrong. You see the difference? So how you're going to turn this is by constantly listening to God, meditating upon God. And God is going to ask you, yesterday you said you will not steal. Why did you steal? It is not the right thing to do. Come on, do not do it again. And when you keep on listening to the same thing over and over and over again, what does the Bible say? Faith comes by hearing and hearing and hearing by the word of God. So the more you are hearing this word of God, the more you are hearing this is not right, this is right, you start believing it. Faith starts coming in. And what is faith? Faith is a feeling. You start feeling that, mm, I'm not enjoying doing these sinful things. I'm not enjoying walking into the f- in, in the flesh. You flesh, I can see you because you are an entity by your own self. Yeah? Stop doing this. And you start hating sin by default. And that is how we start walking in the spirit. Do you see the point? So, I will say this. The flesh is an entity by its own self. Like the way we can say a limited company. It's an entity by its own self. It has its own tax returns. It has its own everything. You, as a business person, you have your own tax returns. But the company which you might be owning, it's an entity by itself. It can make its own decisions, can purchase other businesses, can do what and what and what. That is exactly how the flesh is against your spirit. You see, my friends, when you understand this, you start understanding how can I walk in the spirit and things become so real.